all right good morning afternoon or evening everyone today i'm going to be playing the new tier 9 premium cruiser the admiral schroeder i think that's how you pronounce it probably um so here it is it's a tier 9 german premium cruiser it's a it's a heavy cruiser it's a super heavy cruiser or whatever it's a large cruiser i think the official terminology is and it's going to be available for the final event, final reward for the dockyard, which will have 30 phases apparently. It'll come with a special camo, whatever, commemorative flag, 10 point commander. And apparently it says you'll be able to purchase two starter packs totaling 10 phases and four phases at 10k or 5k each for a total of 15k doves before reaching four phases. Um, players can earn 26 phases through combat missions so you only have to buy the four so it'll cost you 5k doubloons therefore it says the cost the most cost effective way if you're going to be playing the game is you spend the 5k doubloons on the early pack you get a slight discount and you can buy the ship and then you have to obviously grind the missions that's if you're going to grind the missions um so this is the admiral schroeder um so let us talk about the ship right so let's start off with the armor layout as per usual um, we have 27 millimeter nose armor 30 millimeter deck armor and we have a 27 millimeter aft we also have a 90 millimeter side plate if we take off the armor like this we can see the citadel is pretty much on the water it's slightly above the water but we also have a turtle back of um, 80 millimeters there so there you go um, so that's the armor layout it's quite similar to that of an a gear for example in terms of the external armor, 30 deck, 27 nose, and 90 millimeter side. If we do take off this, the icebreaker on Aegir is also 80. But I think the angle is slightly different on the um, Schroeder. But um, yeah. Let us look at the commander build. I'm going to be running for the first game. So I'm going to be running this commander build first. Because I'll tell you why. So we're going to be running Grease the Gears, Gun Feeder, Priority Target superintendent survivability expert concealment expert adrenaline rush and top grade gunner now why am i not running heavy ap shells well i run this captain on for example my mines and my hindenburg at the same time so well this doesn't really work on mines and on hindenburg well it's good but i prefer having se on hindenburg than i do um, heavy ap shells to be honest because i find it more valuable per game and i'm just going to be taking the commander build straight onto this so i'm not going to be changing it at all um, this is in a real situation. You guys are probably going to share your captain with Hindenburg or Mines or something. And you're going to share the same captain because you don't have infinite 21 point captains. So this is the captain I would take. Um, also for the first game, I think we should try it with the um, secondary build. Now why? Um, this is because the ship actually has pretty good secondaries. Um, so for the first game, I'm going to be trying it on secondary build. And then on the second game, I'm going to be trying it main gun build. So we see both builds to see how they are. So we have auxiliary armaments mod 2 here. Concealment system mod 1. Prop mod 1. Secondary battery mod 1. Damage control. Well, actually, no. I'm going to change this one to, if you don't mind. <laughs> I'm going to actually change this one to speed boost mod. Because this does come with a speed boost, yes. So shoulder does have a speed boost, which is unlike Eger or Siegfried. Um, so I'm just going to put that on right there. And then for the first slot, we're going to take Auxiliary Armaments Mod 1. And you have a... And then uh, for exterior, before I talk about the characteristics, for the exterior, you have this shit brick brown camo, which I think looks hideous. But you also have this gorgeous blue camo, which I'm going to be using. You also have the war paint camo, which I can't really show you right now, because I don't actually have it um, on my account right now. Um, but anyway... So now I'm going to be talking about the ship characteristics before we go into the game. Um, like usual, guys, you've, you probably, if you've been watching the past uh, five videos or something, you know I'm going to be doing the ship characteristics now instead of in the middle of the game. So I can actually go into detail a bit now. If you want to skip straight to the games, you can totally do that this instant. Alright. Anyway. Alright, so for survivability, we have 63,350 HP. That's with survivability expert, and we also have 22% uh, torpedo pr hit protection or whatever. It's not too bad. In terms of the artillery, if you want to look at the armor layout, we discussed it before. Um, it's also chaptered, so you can skip to that if you want. Um, so for artillery, I have a 305 millimeter gun, same as A gear, for example, with an 18 second reload. You can put that down to 15.8. We'll do that next game, obviously. We'll try that with main gun build. It's 18 second reload like this with this build. 
Um, but we have 18.4 kilometer range. No spotter plane available, I believe. Nope. Um, pretty decent alpha, 8.3k, and then 3.4k on the HE, 24% fire chance, and 76 millimeters of pen, which is really good for the HE because it's German HE, it gets improved penetration. In terms of the secondary armament, we have the 128s here, which is stock, by the way, pen 32, so you don't have to put uh, IFHE on them. So we have a 2.3 second reload on them with the build. We have 10 kilometer range on the secondaries. Might not seem like a lot, but I'll show you why it might be a lot. Um, we have a 6% well, fire chance and 32 millimeters of pen. On the bigger guns, on the 150s, we have a 4.5 second reload. Still 10 kilometer range, of course, but a 9% fire chance with 38 millimeters of pen. So you have quite a lot of penetration with these shells. In terms of depth charges, this is a super heavy cruiser, guys. With ship base ASW. Yes, it's a super heavy cruiser or a large cruiser with ship base ASW. I don't know why, because Ager and Siegfried both get air based. But here we are, guys, with ship base ASW on one of these cruisers. AA defense is rated 86. I don't know if it's any good or not, to be honest with you, but there you go. It's rated 86. Um, can you put DFA on it? No, you can't put DFA on it. So that's these are the values and they won't change. So you cannot put DFA on it. That in mind. Maneuverability, it goes 34.1 knots, which is quite fast. It has an 840 meter turning radius, which is quite huge. Rudder shift time is 13.6. Um, they are better characteristics than Aegir, but it also gets a 15% speed boost for a max duration. So that's quite interesting, actually. It will go really fast and for quite long as well. 15% speed boost is quite impressive. In terms of concealment, though, it's 10.2 on a large cruiser, which is quite good because if we look at Aegir, for example, um, with full concealment, it's 13.2 apparently. No, no, it's 11.9. Um, but this is, well, 10.2 if it were to update. I don't know why it's not updating instantly. There you go. 10.2. Pretty good concealment. So it's very stealthy. Reminds me of, for example, a Napoli or something. And in terms of its consumables, you have obviously speed boost, like we mentioned. Normal heal, a 6 kilometer hydro, and damage control for 5 seconds. But I think we should go into our first game for secondary spec Schroeder. All right, so here we are on Sea of Fortune with the Schroeder, a secondary spec. So we're gonna go left side, A side, because we spawned like closer to that side, I guess. We're gonna go to that side, and we'll see, we'll see how it is. Um, so we have Neptune Rune, Day Junk Hipper, York Omono. Only one destroyer matchmaking. Duke of York. I hope we can fight that because we can pen him everywhere, even Key. But uh, the rest, uh, we'll see. But anyway, I'll skip to that part so you guys don't have to watch the entire start of us going to a flank. Alright, so honestly, if we went B, we would have the freest game of our lives. But we didn't go B, because I was scared no one's going to go there. So if we went B, though, we would have the freest game of our WoW's career. Because there's two cruisers, we can dumpster. But it's okay, we're going to be playing against the Bloody Vostok. There's a Lightning. He's in the A division. He's with the Hipper. Hipper spawned on the other side, so the Lightning's in C. Obviously, he's also capping, so that should be fairly obvious for us. But, um, yeah. So, I think we can activate speed boost right now. So, something about the speed boost is it's a 15% speed boost if you miss the ship characteristics section. So, it's actually a 4-minute speed boost almost with 15% duration. That's, of course, with... Sorry, 15% uh, bonus with... 4 minute duration, but that's of course with the module, keep in mind. So I do have the module on it. Oh, there's the Rhone! You think he's gonna come around? Okay, that's actually pretty scary if he does come around. We don't have any Torps, keep in mind. We replaced our um, Torps from Aegir, for example, or uh, Siegfried with uh, Secondaries. Now remember, original Siegfried and Aegir, well Aegir in testing had Secondaries, but um, of course they were nerfed down, and then Siegfried was released with Secondaries, but... Sadly, they got nerfed due to Commander Rework. Now, here we are on the third version. This one actually has secondaries. They're shorter range than what Siegfried used to have, but I believe they are actually better secondaries than what uh, Siegfried used to have. So, um, can we actually get any damage on this Rhone? Or is he going to come forward? Please do. Come on. He's not coming forward. What do we... Oh, no, he 
keeps reversing, man. How are we gonna output damage on this guy? Boom! -boom. Now we have to be really careful against this bomber because we're broadside. Oh, he shot HE, we're okay. Secondaries activate! Here we go. This is this is it, guys. This is why you're playing the, the Admiral Schroders. You're trying to get the secondary action in place on the rounds. Six overpens. Not bad. <laughs> um. So yeah, we're sitting outside the Rhone's uh, secondary, uh, sorry, it's the Rhone's torp range, obviously. Let's try to minimize the damage. Luckily, we have this Pomeran who does not have guns. He's basically just shooting HE at us, which we're super lucky about, obviously. We'll check the secondary damage after the game is done. I mean, I don't think we're doing that much secondary damage, guys. I don't know. I feel like I'd rather have a full, like a three second reload buff on my main guns, but clueless, I guess. Boom! Uh, some damage on the own there. I'm gonna try heal here. So I don't die to a fire. I don't think we're gonna die to this fire though. I think we're chilling. Sadly, we couldn't kill the own with secondaries. We hit him... Uh, uh, 20 times... No, no. 50 times... 55 times with secondaries. And we did basically... I mean, nothing, I think. We'll have to check after the game's done. We do pen him everywhere though, so it's quite weird if we actually ended up doing nothing. I don't think we did nothing. Unlikely. I'm actually gonna load HE for this uh, Pomeran, by the way. I feel like we're doing kind of miserably with the AP, to be honest. Problem gelöst. We do have a 24% fire chance you have to keep in mind. We have 76 millimeters of pen, so our guns aren't actually too bad. And um, the issue is that we only have eight guns, obviously. And obviously we're not gun spec right now, so that's gonna make them even worse. I'm um, in terms of reload, in terms of accuracy, in terms of survivability of the guns as well. It's all gonna be worse. Because we're not specced into them at all. Um, I'm actually gonna rotate on this uh, Vladivostok because he's way more important right now for me. Actually, a really bad spot for me right now, to be honest. Um, I think we just have to just remain pre-kited in this position, even though we're super aggressive here. I don't think we can escape, so I think we're just gonna have to sit here and we hope our North Carolina presses W into the bloody or something. Um, I'm just gonna sit here and secondary this guy. I guess this is kind of what we wanted to test the secondary action, but Vladivostok isn't something we can pen too easily with secondaries, so it's not really something we want to be fighting. But if we can set those fires, that's gonna help us quite a fair amount here. Uh, don't hurt me. Uh, he hurt me, but not too much. I'm gonna try load AP for him. We don't have the accuracy, sadly, so the accuracy is gonna be really bad. Even on a broadside Vladivostok at 7 kilometers, we can barely hit 3 shells. That's it, he escaped. He's like, shit, that's way too much secondary action for him. So he's gonna walk away. Obviously, that's a smart decision. I'm going to go dark if possible. I think I can, because the plane just died. And this is kind of kind of an intense situation, guys, because we want the speed boost now. 27 seconds to speed boost, and then we'll be back into the game. There's a Neptune. We can totally um, do some damage to a Neptune with AP. I'm actually going to try shooting him a bit early here. Mm, no promises on getting damage. I'm not going to use Hydra yet. I'm saving it for when the actual Neptune or someone is in actual Torp range. 8k on the Neptune, not too bad. We don't really want to be open watering too much because of the Rhone Palmer. They're both spamming HE at us, which means, well, we can get lit on fire. And fires on this thing, well, they do a lot of damage. Why? It, well, it's because, well, you can take 60-second uh, fires because it is a large cruiser. Oh, yes. Um, oh. Uh-oh. Do damage. So yeah, you have 60 second fires with no ability to run fire prevention. You can run those anti-fire skills if you wanted to, but I prefer prop mod and speed boost mod. I feel like those are way more valuable than, than the fire stuff. Um, five seconds still heal. Honestly, I think I'm just gonna run it down. There's not much time left in the game. We're kind of winning and dominating. Not us ourselves, but more like our team is kind of dominating. So I'm just gonna press W here and I'm gonna run it. Um, what's a bit unfortunate is, I think we do have quite a lot of secondary damage. 
I, no, not, not a lot of, sorry, secondary hits. But in terms of damage, I don't think we did too much with the secondaries. I'm gonna actually hide her right here. Oh, one thing to note, actually, the back-back turret is 360, like the one on Schlieffen. It's it's kind of like a Schlieffen, but cruiser version. If I if I have to, like, think about it, it's kind of very similar to Schlieffen, but a, a cruiser variant. More more like a rope ride, I guess, cruiser version. If, if you want, we can actually stay dark out here, by the way, outside the smoke. And just secondary them for free, but I really want to get this damage out on the, on the Neptune. Peace! Zero damage. Obviously, it's a cruiser, so we don't really get commander skills teamed towards secondaries, guys. But that's the nature of the cruisers, guys. We don't get those luxuries, like battleships, who get secondary skills. So we can't really upgrade the secondaries anymore via range, for example. Even Napoli can't, for example. It's just the nature of cruisers. We can upgrade them from the equipment, but nothing on the commander build that can actually improve secondaries. Literally nothing, by the way. So this is what we have. Fire alarm. Oh wow, I couldn't even kill him. Alright, got him with secondaries, I guess. Remember, I can't get achievements in this because this is a test ship, but the stats are obviously final, so this is the ship you're going to be able to get. Let's take a look at the score. Alright, so we ended up doing 146,000 damage, 81 shell hits, 1 kill, 2 citadels, 6 fires, got 129 secondary hits. In terms of team score, we got second place on the team. We'll be complimenting our Mogami for getting top. Good work. Um, in terms of detailed report, we got 54k on the Rune, 37k on the Neptune, 34k on the Pomeran, and 19k on the Vladivostok, and we took 76k ourselves. Um, as you can see from secondary damage, we did around 31,000. I'm going to plus 20,000 to it, so 51,000 damage from secondaries. Now, you could argue you could have probably done that 51,000 damage if you had more accurate guns and a quicker reload. That's what we'll be testing in the second game, but this was a secondary spec test here, as you can see. Credits and XP. We got 554,000 credits, 6.5k XP, 700 free XP, and 8,000 commander XP. And that was game one. This one was the secondary spec version. So I'm actually going to try it now. I'm going to switch the build, as you can see. I'm going to change it to main gun build. We're going to try it out for one game with the main gun build. And you guys will see if it's pretty much any better or not. It depends on the situation, of course. All right, so here we are on Shatter, game two. This one is a main gun build. So we do have a reload buff. We have our, you know, our pretty much, well, 15.8 second reload. We have um, the accuracy, which is improved, which isn't too bad. Something you can note, obviously, our secondaries have less range. That's because it's 8.8 .8 kilometer secondary range now. So obviously it's not as good, but... That's only, I think, 1.2 kilometers is? Yeah, it's 1.2 kilometers less secondary range. Obviously, they reload slower as well. So we do have those downsides compared to what we had before. But we're going to be going towards A, I think. And we'll just play the A cap and we'll see how we can do. All right, so we're in range of something. So something you guys might have realized is I'm not using speed boost in spawn, like, straight away. So I want to say, even though we have four, I want to save it to when we start the engagement. Because normally, if you use it in spawn straight away... Um, the issue will be is when you actually get to the engagement, there's only what, like one minute left on the speed boost or, or two minutes or whatever. So then it runs out in the middle of an engagement and you're going to have a hard time. Sadly, we're going to have to wait for the Musashi here to cross. And then we'll... I have four ships aiming at me. This is quite scary, but I don't think we die. There is some AP coming that looks like Isamore Soyuz. Not really sure. Hopefully the Musashi can let me turn out. He's gonna let me turn out very shortly, please. 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 Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Alright, we can play the game again legally. So we're gonna turn out here. And we're gonna try and do some damage to this lion, I guess. I will see. We'll be able to do some damage to the lion. Now, there's obviously a Brindisi to our right. He actually can't pen my side armor with sap. I have to keep in mind. So he has to aim for either my front, my superstructure, or my aft. My superstructure is quite small. Something you have to note as well in the Admiral Schroeder. Uh oh. Uh -oh. I don't, 
have second range for that one. Right? No. But even if I did, he went dark instantly. The thing with the main gun build, I must say, is it's quite boring with the main gun build, right? Because, um, well, you don't have that secondary action that you do with the actual um, secondaries, obviously. I think if you want to play a main gun Schroeder, you should probably maybe just play a Carno or something, to be honest. Carno. Because it has the speed boost and stuff. I mean, obviously you could play Aegir or whatever, but I think Carno is better than Aegir for a lot of things. We're actually going to play a bit aggressively here because there's pretty much nothing I need to be scared of. Obviously, secondaries would be a bit useful here. Well, not yet. We haven't been in range to really do any damage with the secondaries either way. Um, so, honestly, we could actually implement some secondary action in this game, even though we are main gun spec. But we'll try, we'll try. We could pin the line literally everywhere. Everywhere, by the way. There's something in B. There's a Soyuz inside the B cap, guys. Inside it. Look. <laughs> inside the B cap, there's a Sovetsky Soyuz that somehow found its way there. I'm not sure how. But he is there, which is quite scary to be honest, but that's gonna have crossfire on us, so we can't really play too aggressive here. I haven't really been able to get into second rage either way, even if we had secondary spec. What we can do is we can come out on this line with HE loaded, we can tr Oh my god, someone settled them from the ass. Um, let's try to do a fire maybe, get a fire or something on the guy. I can't keep pushing him, why? You might ask. There's a Soyuz looking at us here. If we're over there, he's gonna be looking at us all the way through. So, and we'll be broadside to him, which means he can probably settle the loss, even if he's far away. That doesn't really matter. Um, if he gets one lucky shell, he will settle the loss, so. Um, got a fire on the line, which is super nice. I don't know if it's sperm or not, because I don't know if he DCP'd recently or not. But it seems to be perma, because he's not DCPing it. He is healing, though, at the same time, so he doesn't really care about the fire too much. Maybe we can get a second fire here. Nope, 4k damage though, which isn't too bad. He got one shot by probably the Musashi, who overmatches him everywhere. That's pretty good for us. He just DCP'd the fire, which means 15 second DCP. We should be able to get uh, the perma fire in mm, 10 seconds. Unless he obviously dies. He's dying very rapidly, I would say. So... Let's turn around like this. Machine and boost deactivate. I shall turn around and run it down, guys. There's not much time left in the game. Is this score timer is broken, actually. What? Why is it broken? I don't know why, actually. Oh, well. It's broken, guys. We got a fire in the soil. He's probably going to instantly DCP that. Yes, he did. Instantly, of course. There's no questions asked. Um, he was shooting us before, but when we shoot them back, we're not allowed to get damage. Just the way things go, I guess. Let's try to get maybe the permafire, but it's unlikely with front two turrets only. It's quite unlikely. I must say, the build I have to prefer so far has to be the secondary build, guys. But there's obviously gonna be games where you're not gonna be allowed to play secondary spec, because, well, maybe you get Ocean or something, for example. I played the ship yesterday when I was just tra trying it out, and I get secondary spec Ocean. And it's not easy on Ocean, I must say, because, well, it's an open water map, right? And, well, you... You know, you're not really allowed to push up unless you have teammate smoke. This is actually something I wanted to mention last game, but I didn't. Um, the smoke firing penalty on the Admiral Schroeder is really good. 9.9 kilometers. So that means if you have a div mate buddy, for example, um, you can actually get quite a lot of damage if he just smokes you up, for example. Wow, look at that kill. Wow, that was all us. No, nah, it was actually we did zero damage. Someone said it all then we stole the kill by accident. He was, when I shot him, he wasn't like low, dude, you know? And I do. So. In this case, we could be using secondaries, but well, 
We don't have the range buff. We have gun gun spec. I must say the guns seem pretty fu like miserable to be honest with you guys. Like they seem pretty miserable. And these kills are, I mean, I'm not trying to steal them guys. They're just coming my way. Because I'm shooting them when the targets are like 30k HP. And then when my shells hit, they're 100 HP. What? I, I have no control over that. Except maybe I guess I could not shoot the 30k HP targets. But I mean, why would I not shoot 30k HP targets, man? Alright, so we might actually be able to start playing the game again here shortly. There's a Siegfried here. Oh, I had AP loaded, unfortunate. He's angled, so it's gonna do zero damage. Probably should have HE loaded here. There's a lot of ships that, well, we won't really overmatch. Plus, HE could actually help us quite a fair amount here in this situation. We also can't set it most of these ships we are shooting, so HE wouldn't be too bad of a choice, to be honest. We're going to switch to HE here. See what we can do. Or what we can't do. <laughs> Run it down! Quickly! Quickly. Something I mentioned, I think the Tar Traverse is incredibly good on this thing. I didn't actually check the time. We should check the time on the Tar Traverse after this game is done. Because I think I forgot to mention that in the ship characteristics section. I'm sure some of you saw it because I was hovering over it. No, I don't have second range for this guy. I mean, even if I did, I don't have I don't have 10.2 secondary range. I have 10.0, so we're not even gonna be able to secondary him too much. Double fire. He's gonna DCP that. Yep, instantly, as quick as can be. It's a bit unfortunate not having torpedoes in this situation. <gasps> no, I beached. Unfortunate. Quite unfortunate, I must say, this is a pretty miserable showcase of the main gun build. But in this match, we wouldn't have been able to use secondaries. Everything is like just out of secondary range. But the thing is, when when people are going to start pushing us here, which they are, secondaries are actually going to start being useful. But they're still going to be in range, actually, because, well, it's the nature of things, I guess. Oh, remember, I do have a secondary flag on, by the way, so my range is slightly buffed on the secondaries. Keep that in mind. So be careful to Alaska because he has improved AP penetration capabilities. Or pen angles. I don't know if anyone has a shot on the Alaska. Oh, I think we have to try to kill him. He's gonna do a lot of damage to me. Something else which is gonna do a lot of damage to me is this Siegfried who's running it. Oh, Alaska should be close to dead here. If I had second respect, he might die, guys. If I had second respect, hope you. No, but truly, like, he's at 5k HP. Maybe, maybe a secondary could light the fire. Well, he's dead anyway, so I guess it doesn't matter. You never know, though. You never know. 305. I don't overmatch 27, by the way, so we shouldn't really be trying to fight a Siegfried here. So I'm gonna load HE. And I'm gonna walk away, loading HE because I don't overmatch him. So there's no real point to... We just abandoned A, by the way, and they, the Z just walked back into A and took it. Omega lol. Omega lol. Alright, I guess I'll speed run towards the, the A cap and try to take it from a Z with my own uh, Schroeder. But... It's going to be quite a difficult game to win, guys, I must say. We, we, we're we just out position, I think. The enemy has a better position overall. Um, we could be able to win via kills, to be honest, if we kill enough people. But they're using these islands on, on, on shards. What, what is this? Shatter, sorry. They're using them quite well. But I must say, they are in good positions. They are in a good hold positions. Like here, where the FDG is, or where the other FDG is. The Siegfried's actually dying to... I don't know what Alsace, I guess. We do still have a battleship, I guess, on the board. Um, I know I'm going to donate my damage here by going towards A to cap it, guys. But we need to try win the game at the end of the day. We're not just trying to get the damage. So we're going to try and help the team by capping. But obviously, we're going to have to keep in mind the threat, such as the Z46, which we're going to have to deal with, obviously. I believe we were spotted by him as well, so... Um, there's probably torps coming, to be honest with you. Um, I'm gonna pre-heal, even though it's not a big heal. It's 5k, so it's half the size of my normal heal. But I'm gonna pre-heal because, well, I don't wanna get take, like, two torps and be left on, like, 0 HP when I could be left on 5k HP or something. It's, it's the Zed spotting us, so he's probably there. If I were to guess, he could be up there. I 
don't know, guys. It's a complete guess at this point. Right? So, we're just gonna have to guess and survive via guessing. Um, we'll see. Our Hydro is in one minute. One minute till Hydro. We're gonna be capping the A cap, so that's gonna be helping us not bleed too many points too quickly like we were. And we kill the Siegfried. Mm, maybe with our Alsace. Wait, Z46 killed our Buffalo. Oh, that's truly unfortunate. Our radar cruiser died. Siegfried needs to die. He's on 75 HP. I mean, they just have to shoot him once. Maybe Alsace just YOLOs it or something. Something needs to happen. Brindisic. I don't know if it can beat the 10k Johan. I think it's going to be a very hard game to win, especially since I'm not allowed to output my guns here. Because, well, I'm having to cap. If we don't cap, we're going to lose instantly. So, If we cap and get some kills here, it's actually going to help us quite a fair amount. 10 seconds still cap. Sadly, everyone is dying on purpose. On purpose, by the way. Not by accident. On purpose. So we might actually lose. Siegfried's on 75 HP. Brindisi can't shoot one sap shell at him, to be honest. I don't know why. Maybe line of sight is not really allowing him to. I don't know. But it's 75 HP, so it should be the freest kill of his life. But he chooses not to get it. I'm pretty sure that's line of sight. Maybe the island's a bit too high, I guess. The only thing I can think of right now is running it, to be honest. I don't have any other ideas. There's 40 points left. I don't know why the Brindisi is not shooting the Siegfried. To be honest with you. The island must be too high. That, that must be the reason. This island's way too high, maybe. I think I think Breast dies here. If it gets a ram off, it's not too bad, actually. Oh, it's not too bad, actually. If it, yep, he got the ram off. That's actually really good for us. That's really, that's really good for us, actually. But Brindisi is super low HP. Yeah, he died. That's really bad. Sadly, we couldn't kill the Siegfried who was on 75 HP for the past 20 minutes. Alsace kind of died for free. He could have actually traded then. I mean, obviously, I should have maybe... Nah, I don't think we could have not gone A, by the way. Because we had to go cap A because, well, we were losing too many points at that point. So, yes, we did lose the game, unfortunately. But that's the rules of the game, I guess. Take a look at the score. All right, so we get, ended up getting 97,000 damage, 101 shell hits, two kills, seven fires, one cap, and six secondary hits. Um, fourth on the team, and pretty bad, miserable performance by me. Apologies. A detailed report. We pretty much just damaged the line and Alaska a bit. We could, I, I don't think the guns are the, the way you should need to build this, to be honest. We got 1.4 million credits, but we actually didn't get remove 1 million from that because that's a, that's a mission, so... If you remove the mission for 1 million XP or credits or whatever, we got like 400,000 credits. In terms of my commander build again, I'm going to be running this either way with secondary spec or not. Um, I'm going to be running Grease the Gears, Gun Feeder, Priority Target, Superintendent, Survivability Expert, Adrenaline Rush, Top Grade Gunner, and Concealment Expert. In terms of my equipment, honestly, this is what I ran last game, but honestly, run this. This is a way better build, to be honest, I have to say. Um, the secondaries just help you. I mean, having them isn't too bad. I've tried the guns both ways. The guns just don't feel good enough in where I need to spec into them. They're just, they seem really miserable. The guns are really bad. Um, so, honestly, if you want to play a gun spec Schroeder, play Carno or Aegir or something or Siegfried, not Schroeder. If you want to play Schroeder, you're going to play it with secondaries. That's the way. Okay? And it's good at that. It's, that's what it's for, right? So, that's the build. Um, in terms of the price, I'm just going to reread the paragraph Wargaming sent us, so I can read it to you, obviously. So, um, Schroeder is the final reward for the 11.11 .11 Dockyard event on Phase 30, and will come with the Warpaint special camo and commemorative flag and a 10-point commander. You will be able to purchase two starter packs, totaling either 10 phases and 4 phases, at 10k and 5k dubs each for a total of 15k dubs before reaching four phases so you don't actually have to buy both of them guys right don't buy both of them you can choose which one you buy you can buy both of them remember you have until you you reach stage four to get the discount so they're still stage four but it says players can earn 26 phases through combat missions so therefore if you play the game you can get the schroeder with only purchasing four 
four phases, so it's going to cost you 5,000 doubloons for this tier 9 ship. Players can earn 26 phases from combat missions, so the most cost-effective way, it says, is that players can receive Schroeder by purchasing the 5k doubloons pack and then grinding as per usual, as per every single other dockyard event. Um, now, the question you might be asking is, is it worth it for 5k doubloons? I mean, honestly, to me, I don't see myself playing this ship a lot. I do see it as quite fun with the secondaries. I think the secondaries do make it quite fun, I have to say. 10 kilometer concealment plus 10 kilometer secondaries is a very good combination for a good uh, ship in terms of secondaries. And so if you do like secondary ships, this could be a ship for you, to be honest. If you're more into gun-focused ships, I wouldn't really care about it. But 5k doubloons, I mean, it really depends, right? If you're giga-rich IRL and you don't give a fuck, sure, go ahead. But I don't know why you need me to tell you that. And then if... If you well, if you're like don't have enough for 5k doubloons, guys, don't don't stress out too much over missing out a shoulder, right? Like don't don't get FOMO, like fear of missing out, right? Not something you really need to care that much about. Like it's it's cool to have, but it's not something you need. It's not something that's gonna change the meta or anything, right? But it's there. So if you want it, you can get it for 5k doubloons. That's if you play the game or grind the game, whatever. Um. In terms of fun, I, I, like I said, it's quite fun if you do get into secondary range. If you don't get into secondary range, it's quite miserable, I must say. It reminds me a lot of Schlieffen or Ruprecht, but obviously those ships are quite better at their roles. I think Ruprecht is a better ship, tier for tier. Well, it is tier 9 as well. Ruprecht is a better ship. It does have better secondary range. It does, you know, it's a better ship. It's a better hull. It's, you know, etc. It has torps, things like this. Um, but this could be quite interesting for you if you do like that secondary spec. And you want to try it on a cruiser. That's pretty much the video, guys. Um, I hope you enjoyed it. Let me know if I missed something or something or whatever. I hope you enjoyed the video. And I'll see you in the next one. But do please let me know if you enjoyed the video. Or if you enjoyed, well, anything, really. <laughs> or if you have any feedback or anything for any other videos or this video in particular. Thank you so much, guys. And I'll see you in the next video. Big fan.